All right, so here's a reaction that takes place inside the cell. Here's lactose, and that, uh, that bond between the glucose and galactose gets broken, leading to free glucose and free galactose, and this is the reaction that is catalyzed by this enzyme, beta-galactosidase. All right, now in lab, we're going to watch a slightly different reaction taking place. So in lab, we're going to use this molecule called ONPG, and that stands for O-nitrophenol galactose. And this, uh, the bond between the ONP and the galactose gets broken down to give us ONP and, and free galactose, and this is also catalyzed by the same enzyme, beta-galactosidase. Now, the reason why this reaction is useful for us in lab is that the ONPG molecule, this is clear, whereas the ONP molecule by itself, this one is yellow. So we'll be able to watch for this color change, and then we'll also be able to dis detect this yellow product using the spectrophotometer. All right, when you get into lab, you're going to start off by making a model of the LAC operon, or at least part of it. This rope represents a piece of DNA, and then here you can see this piece of paper represents the part of the uh, DNA containing the beta-galactosidase gene. So as discussed before, this is the part that gets transcribed and translated to make the enzyme beta-galactosidase, and it's beta-galactosidase that you're going to be analyzing in this lab. Now, next I'm going to next thing I have to do is put on the regulatory DNA sequences. All right, so now the regulatory sequences are set up, and there's a card in lab that's going to help you and your group get this part set up correctly. Now we're going to imagine what happens in a wild type cell. So to get expression of the beta-galactosidase gene, the enzyme RNA polymerase has to be able to bind onto the DNA and position itself here at the start of uh, the beta-galactosidase gene to get expression. Now the interaction of RNA polymerase with the DNA begins here at this sequence called the promoter. And you can see the shapes here are designed to emphasize that the RNA polymerase and the promoter can interact. They have a similar shape there. Now, if nothing prevents it, RNA polymerase will then migrate along the DNA here to get to the beta-galactosidase gene, and transcription will start. Now, there are also some genes that regulate gene expression, and those are these other shapes here. The first one we'll talk about is the repressor gene, or LAC-I. Now again, by looking at the, the shape of this, of this protein, you can see that it is, at this moment, able to interact with this sequence here called the operator. So there's a good binding between those. Now when the repressor is bound on the operator, then the polymerase is physically impeded from moving across the operator region to the beta-galactosidase gene, and you don't get expression. However, if lactose is present, the conformation of the repressor changes. Notice how here it's got one shape. Here we have a different shape at the bottom showing that the conformation of this protein has changed, and that's induced by the binding of lactose. So now the operator can no longer bind onto the repressor, and the repressor is going to diffuse away. And now RNA polymerase is free to move across this region, and you get expression of beta-galactosidase.